Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope you're having a good December so far. We are in week two already, which is crazy. So welcome to the studio. I'm a little early this morning getting this going, which is super, super exciting. I feel on the ball <laughs> for a Monday morning. Um, so hopefully that continues throughout the entire day. So if you are catching this live, feel free to ask some questions in the chat function. If you are catching the replay, I do get notifications when there are comments. And so you can also leave questions or comments um, even if you're catching the replay and I do go back and, and I will answer them. If it's not a quick answer that I can type out, um, you'll get a, a second video or a phone call from me. Okay. Um, um, if you are tuning in for the first time, I should introduce myself. My name is Allison Jensen and I'm the owner of Orange Easel School of Art. This is our weekly coffee and checking in that we do on Monday morning here in the studio to talk about what's going on in those classes that your kids are taking. So if you're taking regular weekly classes here in the studio um, and you're like, what in the world do they even do for the hour that they come in or our 90 minutes that they come in every single week? Um, this is where you find that information. So we're gonna go through each one of the types of classes, what they're working on um, this week, and then um, a little bit of housekeeping at the end of the video, all right? And if you are not in classes with us, and you're interested in that, you can go to our website and under weekly classes, find information there about all of these classes and how to join and when they meet and what the prices are and everything. Um, our 2022 registration is going on right now. All right. So let's just let's just dive right in. Let's talk about drawing classes. Right. So we have drawing 101, drawing 102 and drawing 102 for our comic and cartooning class. Um, drawing 101 and Drawing 102 Advanced Realistic are going to be approaching the same subject matter in, in probably two very different ways. But I went out this weekend. What day did I go? Is it Saturday? I think Saturday. And I bought a whole bunch of poinsettias. So we've got poinsettia plants at both of our studios, like real poinsettias. Some of them are red. Some of them are more that like mauve pinky color. And a couple of them are like the, they're almost like a a tie-dyed like striped look where they're red and white, but very high contrast. So I have um, a couple different kinds of poinsettias at the studio and both of our classes, um, the 101 and the 102 Advanced Realistic are gonna be looking at those and making drawings from observation. Now, um, 101, remember they work a lot on line. So they're making contour drawings, a line drawing. Um, they're working, when they do their contour drawings on scale and perspective, and form and shape and like getting the it to look how it actually looks when they look at it, not what they think it looks like in their brain, right? So you don't just look at it and go, oh, poinsettia, and then draw a poinsettia and never look back up again. The 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 goal is that they they look at the subject just as much, if not more, than they look at their paper. So we're just we're training their eyes and their hands to work together and that power of observation. Um, and they'll add color to their drawings. Um, your 101 classes might use a viewfinder in order to figure their composition out on a still life. That's always kind of helpful. Um, and then your 102 class, they do all of the things that 101 does, right? We still have to get a contour drawing in, but then they add in shading values um, and some more interesting compositions. And so they will do the exact same thing in um, graphite or charcoal, not in color, um, in order to do their, their drawings. Okay, so those are the the different compositions that, that they'll come up with hopefully are um, interesting and unique. So drawing 101, drawing 102. Drawing 102 for our comic and cartooning class are going to be working on inking techniques. Um, they've been they've been learning for the last, what are we in? Let's see, four times three. <laughs> what are we on? Like week 14 of our, our of our curriculum. So they've been they've been working a lot on like different facial features. Um, they did storyboarding, you know, working up to actually making their own you know, graphic novel or cartoon or comic. Um, and now we need to teach them how to actually use their, their tool to, to add shading, to add um, depth to their picture, to add value to their picture. So we're gonna be, be teaching um, three different techniques. They'll teach cross hatching, they'll teach stippling, and they'll teach scrumbling. Um, and then we'll practice all three of those. Oh, and line weight, so four things. Um, and we'll we'll do practice all of those techniques and understand when do we use them and why we would use them. So, so that will be inking techniques for them. They may also get out the grayscale markers. Depends on the class. 
Okay. Um, multimedia classes. So done with drawing classes. Let's move on. Multimedia classes. It is watercolor month. So if you didn't get to tune in that, um, last week, you may not know that, but it is watercolor month, which is my all time favorite medium. Um, so we're going to be, we're going to be doing watercolor projects in all of the multimedia classes. K1 and second, third are doing the same project. They're going to be doing, um, sea creatures is the theme. As you know, here at the studio, we don't say like everybody's doing this particular fish and, you know, there's no directed drawing where everybody's artwork is going to look the same, but we do try to give them at least a, we try to narrow it down. So it's not just like paint something in watercolor. So it is sea creatures. So they have to come up with what their subject matter is going to be. And we did some brainstorming last week on what their subject matter could be. Could it be an octopus? Could it be a shark? Could it be an angler fish? Could it be a squid? Could it be a jellyfish? Could it be a seahorse? Could it be some imaginary fancy fish? Absolutely. Whatever underwater thing they would like to put, we will end up with mermaids. It will happen. So whatever their subject is, they have picked it. Okay. Um, and last week we spent, uh, spent the whole time just learning about watercolors and playing with watercolors, just a whole hour of playing because it is a medium that you really like, you gotta, you gotta use it. You gotta, that's how you learn what it's going to do. One of the biggest frustrations that kids and my grownups, because I teach grown up watercolor classes. One of the biggest frustrations people have with watercolors is I put it down and it doesn't do what I think it's going to do, or it, it does what I don't want it to do, or I don't know what it's going to do. And the only way we, we learn that is by trial and error and practicing. So you start to, you start to, um, uh, you, you understand that the paint I put down is affected by how loaded my brush is, how wet my paper is, how um, the ratio of pigment to water that's on my brush, the ratio of pigment of water that is on my paper, the, I mean, everything, right? Then the layer of paints that I have on the paper already, all of that stuff impacts what's going to happen when I touch my brush to the paper. So, so those, those are things that we played with last week. We did, we did some wet on wet. We did some um, dropping in. We did some glazing. We did some lifting off all of those um, fun watercolor techniques in a very playful way. So they, they did do that last week. We didn't actually start a project last week. We talked about it and we played with the, the media this week. They're going to start it. So our K ones and our second thirds this week, We'll start their background first. They're going to be using a wet on wet technique for that, which means we get the whole paper wet with water and they get to drop in, um, you know, watery CE underwater colors. So lots of blues and greens and purples and blacks. And um, I mean, I'll end up with oranges, but whatever. So, so they'll paint their backgrounds. It'll be abstract and very um, flowy. And then they will start on their subject. So we do it on a separate sheet of paper and we paint their subject. Um, so they will, they'll do a pencil drawing with a, um, a soft 6B or 6, or a 6B or 4B pencil. That's a, that's a soft graphite pencil so that it doesn't dent the paper. Um, so they'll go ahead and draw that nice and light, and then they'll, they'll start painting that in. When we paint in our sea creature, we use different techniques that when we paint our backgrounds, we're using wet on wet in the background. And then on our sea creature, we're going to be using washes and glazes. Um, for our young kids, this is the first probably introduction that they've had to, to those techniques. Um, and we're still learning to load appropriate amounts of water onto our brush and remember to continue to load our brush, right? It's not a marker. It runs out of paint. So, um, so to continue to load it and then to, to manage our wetness and dryness. And sometimes we just have to be patient because we can't start the next layer of a glaze unless it dries. So lots of great learning that's happening with watercolors. Um, and so they'll do their subject separately, um, this week. We'll start on that. They probably won't finish it next week. They'll finish it. Um, cut it out and put the two together. Right? We do it that way because um, that way when they're doing that fun wet on wet background, they don't have to worry about going around their sea creature, right? Because watercolors are a transparent paint. And um, if they, you know, aren't careful going around a subject, then we see the background, right? It doesn't paint over the top. So it's easier to do it in two parts for them. And then we'll just collage the two together so they can be successful. Multimedia for the big kids, fourth, fifth, middle school, high school. This is not their first time with watercolors. They're going to be doing mini paintings so that they can do more than one. Um, and they are dealing with landscapes in silhouette. Um, 
So I've got some examples here of different landscape silhouettes that we have done. And you can see that it really emphasizes the sky part of the painting. Um, so the kids, just like, sorry, my phone is buzzing over here. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, okay. We're just gonna set that over here. It's power school. Parents, just buzz, buzz, buzz. Um, so these are the skies that we have going on here. Um, these are also abstract, wet on wet techniques going on. They are done with a different type of watercolor paint. So our young kids are using a pan watercolor or cake watercolor. Our older kids are using a liquid watercolor, which is a more concentrated um, pigment. Um, and they're going to be painting in um, these really like fantasy, beautiful, colorful skies. They are also a glitter watercolor, which is kind of fun. All right. Um, so they played last week, just like the young kids with our different watercolor techniques this week, they're going to start this project. So they'll have to tape their white border. Um, so it has a little frame around it. They will have to, um, paint their backgrounds and then we're going to start learning, um, what a silhouette is, which you think is not tricky, but it is. So, so they're going to start picking up. Um, you know, different silhouettes and understanding those, they'll sketch them out in their journals and be ready the following week to go ahead and put those um, black silhouettes on their, on their, on their finished paintings. Okay. And we're going to be using Sumi ink for the, the silhouettes. So that's our big kids. Super excited about those. There's even like, I don't know if you can tell, there's even, we have a gold, a gold watercolor and you can kind of see the glitter. So, fun projects for those middle schoolers and preteens. All right. Our sewing class are sewing pajama pants. And so last week they just, they did a review of the machines and they got ready and they got their patterns done. This week they'll start sewing and putting those together. It's a pretty easy project. I know some of them are making the, the pajama pants for, for a gift for the holidays, which is, I think is super sweet. Uh, so they will, they'll sew up um, a side seam. They'll sew up the inseam. They'll sew um, the, the two pieces together. They will make a casing for the waistband, and so the casing to the um, to the waist, and then add a drawstring and hem the pants. So not a, not a ton of steps going on in all straight lines, which is super fun. The hardest part is sewing the two halves together because that's that the crotch of the pants, and so it does get to be a lot of material right in there on the machine. But I'm sure that the kids will handle it well. So we're excited to see what those look like. Um, and I think they'll make adorable gifts. Our fundamentals classes, that's our preschoolers. I'm going to move that post-it note. Um, our preschoolers are reading Mooseltoe. This, they read the mitten last week. They're reading Mooseltoe this week. And they are doing part two of those winter landscape pictures. So last time we talked about a horizon, talked about a landscape. We used some big words. Uh, and they, they painted the watercolor part on those because our young kids are doing watercolors as well. They did wet on wet. And then uh, this, this time they will add in the trees for their, their watercolors. We're gonna do that using collage. So those tissue paper um, activities that they did, we're gonna go ahead and have, give them scissors and let them cut out triangles or triangle-ish shapes or square-ish shapes, whatever. Trees can be all sorts of shapes, but they'll cut out some trees and get those glued down onto their landscape wherever they want. Um, and then that will be ready the, for the final step, which is in week three, when we add the ornaments to their trees, which are little sequins and spangles and some snow paint to the, to the bottom of the picture. So super fun. All right. So that's fundamentals. We are rolling right along. You guys, we are down to the, just the housekeeping notes. So here's our housekeeping one. It is December. It is week two in week three. We will shoot to hit all of our, our projects done. That's our goal is in week three that we send all the projects home. Cause week four, is the week before Christmas and you just never know who's going to be here. So we try to get them all done for you. And that week four, um, for my kids who come to four week classes, that is our art and PJ week. So we invite you to wear your pajamas to class. We set up a whole bunch of stations so you can make fun like snowflakes and you can play with snow paint and you can play with our little um, winter sensory bin and you can um, play with more watercolors. So if our young kids want to try their hand at some of these, they can do that. Um, anyway, so we'll have all those stations set up. We make hot chocolate. And it's just a fun time to be together. So that's coming up at the end of the month. The kids will come home with little handouts today. So um, look for those. There's no RSVP necessary. It's just a, a handout for your information. So it's just 
try to give you the information in, in as much of different ways as possible. So that's coming up um, for the last class of 2021. Uh, that's what's going to happen. We also have 2022 registration going on. Your registration, those of you in December classes, it does not roll over to January. It does not roll over to January. You have to re-enroll. Okay, we're not going to charge your card in January. You have to re-enroll. Um, so you have the option of doing month to month. You have the option of doing the entire semester. If you do the entire semester, there is a 15% discount. And um, if your multimedia or fundamentals are showing, it qualifies you for Studio Club and a bunch of other benefits. So, all right, that's all I got. I got to see why my phone is like going crazy. Uh, winter break camps and holiday gift workshops still have room in them if you guys are interested. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday, everybody. And I will chat with you soon.